So here we are. Okay. I didn't, I'm not backing out. I'm not backing out. It's just a lot having to watch <laughs> all these episodes. And I know that some people are like doing all their episodes together. I don't have six hours of time just to be sitting in one setting. Not even on the weekend because, you know, I'm Kingston's mom. But he played basketball. Y'all follow me on Instagram? Anyway. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray, self-love advocate and wife coach. We are reviewing uh, Love is Blind, season seven, episode number six, six things I hate about you. Child, listen, listen, nothing's going to work if we are listening. It's just not gonna happen. Like, and it looks like, like I thought, like the, who's blowing up is blowing up. Like, mmm. So anyway, I still went couple by couple and um, the group dynamic. Maybe I should do the group first. Let's just, Cause I really don't have a lot in the group. Let's just, let's just go. I'm gonna go couple by couple starting with Marissa and Ramses. Um, and I, in my, in my first thing I wrote in my notes after seeing them and that they had been intimate is sex clouding their judgment. I mean, they, they had it in, intimate emotional connection right um and now physically they are good together so i'm wondering if now will sex be clouding their judgment as it relates to the level of love that they have for one another but i do think that they match very well um i also think that he's a good dresser like he's gonna be able to help her in her style she look cute with the friends, but some of the stuff she has worn, I have been like, girl, that's so basic. Like, mm. I also wrote down, she worked, she used the word obsessed. Red flag for me. Toxicity, obsessed. Sounds like I break your heart, you're gonna come get me. <laughs> that's just me. Um, and then after the group meeting, meet up at the, by the pool, uh, their recap was on who's going to make it. And she was like, they're going to make it, you know, her and, her and, uh, Ramses, that Tyler and Ashley are going to make it, that they weren't sure about Taylor and Gary, but they thought so that Nick and Hannah were at about 75% of making it. And I put that as a, that's a high number that they gave them and Tim and Alex at 80%. And I thought that that was high from what we have seen just in the last two episodes of them being together when T taylor and garrett are together um garrett said in real life i don't think that we would have ever met and guess what taylor agrees they would never have crossed paths so are is everybody in dc y'all let me know down below in the comments it makes sense for her because she's a policy advocate are all the contestant contestants is that what we want to call them? We want to call them contestants. This is a light. We're not playing no games. Are all the um, players, we'll call it that until I can think of what it's actually, what, what they're actually called. Do they all live in DC? And I heard Taylor say that she's a Southern California girl. Hence the reason why she can surf. Um, and also the whole like paddle boarding. She was really good at that. Have y'all ever paddle board? Every time somebody paddle boards on something, I ask y'all, have y'all ever done it? Cause baby, you, you gotta be fit and your core gotta be strong. And they over there doing uh, chaturanga, downward dog. Like they doing all the yoga ex exercise poses on the, on, the, on the paddle board. I couldn't even stand up. I barely could get on my knees, but she's a surfer, so it was probably easy for her to be like, hop up, no problem. When they were on the beach before they went paddle boarding, they had a little bit of a conversation, and he was talking about, like, we need to, you know, get on the same page about a lot of things. Like, both of them are very aggressive. I'm glad he clarified that he meant aggressive with work and not aggressive in her spirit, because baby, that them is fighting words okay i know she's not a black woman but for black women black women for sure she is a woman of color so i'm sure because she has to assert herself more as a policy advocate as an asian i don't know if she's an asian american woman i don't know what else she is but 
she has to show up and assert herself even more i'm just saying i'm just saying but i'm glad that he fixed it because she was looking worried i'm glad that they that he was like we're in the line so we haven't seen what they came back and said after the paddle boarding but we did get a little bit of tyler and ashley i was like okay she is like i mean they told us during the reveal that that they were attracted to one another but when she we see her in her confessional she says you know he was already good and if he wasn't my type i still would have liked him but baby he's my type baby he's my type which brings me to say that all this entire group this entire group of people are attractive people they are relatively attractive people i mean i'm sure that some of us like some better than others da 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 da, da. but how so and ever if these people were not attractive okay traditionally attractive let's call it say that would we still be seeing this y'all have seen six seasons before me has there been people who were not attracted to one another physically and still made it through y'all let me know down below in the comments because i'm gonna just be honest with you i'm not gonna go back and watch six episodes unless i'm like sick and we know i don't want to get sick okay so you know or six episodes six seasons y'all know i don't want to do that an hour each child mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. and these ain't got no commercials Mm -mm. It's not like Married at First Sight where it's like two hours and you got an hour worth of commercials. No, 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 no. This is just straight an hour of content on Netflix. On Netflix. I like that that, well, that they were sitting at that table after they, you know, made pasta together. Um, that they had the conversation and he said that people would tell you that I'm not this guy. Don't listen to them. That I'm not this nice. That that's not who I am. And she said people would tell you that I'm crazy. But here's the thing, just because I'm one way with you does not mean I'm going to be that same way with someone else. People bring out certain things in you that you did not know. People that allow you to land in the safe space like these two have done for themselves, uh, it looks different. And I do my damnedest not to judge people based on someone else's experience with them because my experience would t entirely would be entirely different based on who I am as a person. So I do my damnedest not to pass judgment, period, but allow someone else's thoughts and opinion to affect how I feel about someone. But I'm going to be honest, if it show up, I'd be like, this is what they was talking about. This is what they was talking about. This is what they was talking about. <laughs> and not like a little bit because I'm a grace giver. People don't be giving me the grace that I give them, but I give a lot of grace. Um... Uh, she said regardless of what her friends and her family think like they're tied in together that they're not the ones making the decision that she is and that they want to stay and i said they want to stay in that pod is what i called it where it's just just the two of them and we can make it if we try where they just are engulfed and protect and protect them that whole whole hands two-handed circle and this this is our circle right um i hope that works out for them because i do like them together they are still very cute baby nick and hannah nick and hannah hannah and nick i don't think they're gonna make it and like i said she was jealous uh she said she told her she told the girl she felt disrespected because the woman called her a, a bitch is what she said wait wait yeah, I don't know where I wrote that at. But the woman called her a bitch. Oh, wait, no, maybe I... Because, hold on. She told that, and that he was giggling and flirty and laughed. Oh, yeah, she it was with the friends. Hannah is jealous. She's putting 20 on a 10 is what I wrote. That woman did not call her a bitch. He, she said, your girlfriend is jealous. Uh-oh, she's jealous. And um, he did not call that woman babe. He is very friendly, flirty. But none of that occurred. I mean, did I miss something? Did I don't want to rewind. So if you saw her call that... If you saw that woman call Hannah a B-I-T-C-H and that that Nick called that woman babe, let me know because maybe I missed it. Um, and then later on after the pool party event, they talk about the list. They talk about the list. One thing I'm going to say is that I'm really glad that Nick is listening to what she's saying. So her thing about him being mature, 
is not so, but more for her. People often project how they feel or who they are onto other people. And maybe she's not mature enough because she isn't listening to anything that he's saying. Um, she's not even trying where he's like, okay, you feel disrespected. Okay, I hear you. I understand. But that's not what it was. But I'm taking note. Um, and I wrote, I wrote down his feelings are hurt and rightfully so. And that each of them need to be accountable for their actions. So if you're jealous, Hannah, say that I felt a way. I don't normally, I'm normally not jealous, but I felt jealous. And the question that comes to mind when you are jealous is, are they doing something that is causing you to be jealous? Or is it something that you desire? So in this instance, it could be both. She felt like she he was flirting with this woman, but you didn't want to go ride the duck. You should have got on a duck and hopped around on a duck too. But oh, you 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 too cool for that. You too mature for that. Because baby, I probably would have been on that duck too. Especially after a couple shots of tequila. I mean, I'd be having a good time if I have people to have a good time with. I'm lying. I'd be having a good time even by myself. But also, in that same breath, are you jealous because the way he is being right now, you want that for him with you. You want him to have that flirtatious energy with you and um, uh, where you are the center because he was talking to her directly. Like, is that is that what it is, Hannah? Like, and if that's the case, vocalize. Vocalize what you need. That'll help prevent you from being jealous. I'm over that. Baby Alex and Tim. No, wait, what? I'm going to do them after I do the group. I knew that they was going to be a problem. I knew that they was going to be a problem. I could tell that her energy was very no nonsense, but unnecessarily so. And that he's also like, so I, we're going to do them last. We're going to do them after I do the group. So let's talk Steven and um, Monica. She said that he wouldn't, that, that he's not her type. Like she wouldn't see him, have seen him out and been like, oh, I want to go home. I want to take his clothes off and take him, go home and screw him to death. Like she said that what, that wasn't it. That was not who, that was not who she, who she would normally be attracted to. And that, um, women can easily get the ick and she was hoping that <laughs> she wouldn't get the ick. I got, I have gotten the ick. Have you ever, have you ever gotten the ick? The difference, I think, she said, she's gotten the ick and she will be leaving. She needs, I, I can't do it. I've gotten the ick and I've been like, okay, you being silly. Like, I got to think about voices. <laughs> and I got to think about the way people chew when people eat. Like, and if I let those things get in the way, I would not have had some really, really good relationships with people. I would not have met really good people and had really great new experiences and and love them so have you ever had the ick has someone in your relationship boo bae partner spouse whatever uh have you gotten the ick and then walked away let me know down below in the comments um uh, i wrote down she needs affirming i don't she's super gorgeous but she needs to be told that she needs to be reminded that um he finds her attractive that he finds her sexy, that he wants to continuously get a boner. Like she has, she has, she, she needs words of affirmation, reassurance, affirming, any of those. She needs them. Loki, I, I've come to realize that I actually like to be affirmed. <laughs> Especially when you have certain things that you're a little insecure about. Being affirmed, someone affirming you in that feels really good. I, I try to affirm myself because, you know, on my mama, on my hood, I look fly, I look good. Catch my swag, wish you could. Hey, I look fly, hey. So y'all don't hardly ever see these dark circles, but that's an insecurity of mine. And if someone says to me, you know what, you still look beautiful. You look beautiful in your natural state without your dark circles. I'm all like, swoon, heart in my eyes. <laughs> Because it's my shit, not theirs, right? Okay, but we still talking about Steven and Monica. So listen, after the party, 
after the party. The brain, the way the brain, the way the la la the brain, the way the brain works. It's just amazing. Um, I wrote that he will always consider her. I said always. I feel like that he will very often, more than not, consider her. Um, that he will care for her in the way that she desires and that he will protect her. Um, he's a really nice and sweet guy, genuinely. But she told him he talked too much. Like, I'm trying to get a word in edgewise, but you keep talking. I think that comes from him being excited about her, about excited that the people, that everybody accepted him. I think that's ex him uh, also having a little bit of nervous energy because of course, although they have been intimate, although they have been talking for 10 days, I don't know you, you don't know me. So all of those things, and she seems like she might be, I hope not. <laughs> that's what I got, that's what I'm saying. I hope not because when she said that he talks too much she and that she couldn't get a word in edgewise there was silence she didn't have anything to say if he's not talking then she doesn't there's nothing to say now maybe you need quiet and say that maybe you need him to take a couple breaths and say that now she did say it kindly right it wasn't mean but I mean me looking in I'm all like but you ain't saying nothing let that man talk let him be excited about you did we see her question the Alex and Tim dynamic? Now we didn't see any of that on camera, but and I didn't know anything about it when I wrote this down. But I did say um, I knew something would be awry with them. I knew that they didn't mesh as well as they probably are portraying. Oh, now we could talk about the the group couples, and then I'll come back and talk about uh, Tim and Alex. So I wrote down first impressions, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, was, I wrote down, Marissa is talking way too much about her sexual conquest with her man. His he tall, he got big hands and big feet, everything match. So that means like, I was like, you, you talking too much. You sharing too much. Um, everyone has been intimate sexually intimate except Garrett and Taylor. I wrote down about Hannah and her jealousy putting 20 on a 10 when she was talking to Marissa. I was like, when they watch this back, they're gonna be looking like, or maybe they cut it out. But I would think that the producers would not cut out something as juicy as a woman calling you a female dog, like with your man and him laughing and calling her babe. They would have highlighted that. And I swear I didn't see that. And please, I hope you're telling me if you did. Um. I love that when Tyler, I, I'm going to say it every time, when Tyler talks to the fellas, he is sure about Ashley. This is when we find also find out about Hannah's list that she wrote down um, about Nick and his icks and um, is he into, too into his feelings? Is he mature enough? Is his self-confidence versus cocky? Um, is he delusional, delulu? Like, and she left it versus having a conversation with him about the way she was feeling. That alone also tells you the level of maturity that she's on. Now, I get it, you have to journal some things, but she did that intentionally. I really think that that was intentional. And if she did, she should have said, let's have this conversation. Because we, gotta, we be having to write down our thoughts. We be having to figure things out. But it also leaving it out like that and for him to see could also be very hurtful. I remember um, while, while I was married, why every time we talk, I got a story about my marriage. Well, I used to journal. I stopped journaling. When I, I, uh, when I got married, maybe about two months in, three months in, I stopped journaling. Um, he had, I, we had gotten into it and I just, you know, you go in, so I'm not cursing you out. I want to write down what I'm feeling. Well, that man, honey, went and read my journal. And was like, is this how you feel about me? Is this how you see me? And I said, why would you read my personal journal? You know that man said that there is nothing secret between husband and wife? I got my own autonomy and my own thoughts. Would you have rather I spewed all of that shit out that I wrote down? Probably not. It would have hurt. But because you went and snuck and looked now, y'all, you as a married person still need to have your own autonomy. You do become one and all of those good things, but 
don't go read my fucking journal. Like, I was hurt by that, okay? Oh, have, has anyone betrayed you in your relationships? If so, how? How? I just shared mine. Then they have the hot seat and they put Nick D in the hot seat and there's really nothing that they have to say. He kind of like flirts a little bit, but I really think that that is his nervous mechanism, his, you know, his, um, like security blanket because he doesn't know what to do when Stephen was there he said beautiful things that we've heard about um monica and I, what did i write he's so sweet ramses and tyler together i uh sat down together but i knew i wrote down i knew marissa was with some wild shit when he she said we could all leave and go to a sing a swingers club together i knew she'd be with the shit I knew she would, and I'm not here to judge nobody, honey. I wish when I was her age that I was just fancy, free as fancy and as free as I am right now. Um, and he was like, yeah, I knew that he would be with it. Whatever it was, I knew that they would be with it. But also, you have to be secure in who you are in order for um, you guys to explore in ways of, you know, kinks and E&M, which is ethic ethically non-monogamous behavior you have to be a certain way then i wrote down these men are all seeming so great right now they all seem like they're good people and i'm sure that they are i wrote down tim his answer wasn't as sweet but it was realistic and it doesn't feel, it didn't give that feel like you have a connection also considering though he is a virgo man um and probably very logical and rational in his thinking um probably does not know how to be flowery you know them um earth signs they don't really know and then all of a sudden i need to probably do a reaction video because i'd be having all these emotions while i'm watching the show and I, i'm gonna get Ro kingston to try and help me figure out how to do a reaction video i wrote down holy fuck these are mostly black girls like i knew they were black girls but it just didn't dawn on me that four of the six girls are black five of the six girls are are women of color oh and i was like here it comes we deserve all the love we have been through so much through our lifetime when you think of back Especially, you know, American women, black, black American women have been through so much. And then take it back further to the continent where we've descended from. Like we have gone through so much that we deserve sweet, flowery, supportive love. Y'all my eyes. And every time I be watching this stuff, I just want y'all to know. Like, I, you know how I be telling y'all, I don't, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want to be married again. And I don't. I don't want to live with somebody again. Whenever I start watching this stuff and it's feeling good, I'm all like, maybe I do. Oh, maybe I do want a committed relationship in that way. Like, don't be surprised, okay, that I change my mind when they start fussing. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Um, I wrote down, Hannah and Nick are in trouble. And that, I, like I said a minute ago about nick that i'm glad that he's addressing the things that he's actually opening up his mouth but alex and tim baby listen when before we even got to the the party i wrote down she's going to be hard to please that whole hat thing why would you wear that hat don't wear that hat that whole like corn thing like their banter that they have is borderline I don't want to say disrespectful because that's not the right word but borderline mean maybe I don't know borderline tumultuous borderline something <laughs> she's never lived with anyone okay and she's messy a little bit she said and he's a Virgo okay He's the neat and orderly Virgo because I'm here to tell you that there are varying degrees because I am not a neat, neat Virgo, okay? Not an organized Virgo, only in, in my brain, only for work. Um, I know where all the things are, even in my mess, like, 
but when it when I do put things in order they're in order and I can put everybody's house in order I can you want me to come over and reorganize your life I can easily do that for my own it's too much chaos in my brain y'all don't judge me judge your mama <laughs> I hate when I write something down and I don't know what I'm saying but after after the party okay oh look at that line right there y'all see that and muscle I'll be working hard soon I'll be doing some kind of review I got some stuff I'll be working hard he comes in the hotel room they didn't stay the night in the same space evidently they had a big blowout drag down knockout argument um, the night before she said some really mean things she called him out his name what did she call him what did she call him did she say you b-a-n what did she call him what did she say when he said i don't do arguing he meant that baby he meant i don't do arguing I, it's too toxic i don't like going back and forth either i will argue but you will want to leave me alone <laughs> this sharp ass tongue so if i tell you that i need to, okay i need a moment please listen like please, dear future bays please listen if i say give me just a second I need, let me regroup. Um, especially if we've been going back and forth. Especially if I start closing my eyes. Especially if I'm breathing. Especially if my eyes start getting teary. If I say I just need a moment, let me, let's get, can we come back to this? Don't force it. Don't force it because now I'm going to be mean. Now you're going to be like, I knew. Ding, ding, ding. Well, I told you. Okay. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it because that's my own shit. I should not be allowing people to trigger me in in those ways I, I don't want to be triggered at all i want to be able to say what i want to say and not be triggered so i'm working on it i know i was talking shit but i'm working on it i mean they apologize because i really want to see the argument i really want to see the argument are they gonna show us in the next episode don't tell me because i'm about to watch it um and i wrote down how do you move forward because he seems very closed off he said i said that this is i don't like to argue and i don't even know you well enough for you to have gone gone off on me in the way that you did. I don't know you well enough. Why would you do that? Well, at least it's not her representative. At least you know who she is. At least she is bringing that shit to the forefront. And you can make an informed decision. But also, on his side, she's apologizing or whatever. Now it's time to figure out how do we move forward. But for him, what I see is he has an avoidant atta avoidance attachment style. Okay, I don't want to be bothered. I'm out of here. I'm, I'm out of here. I don't want to work on it. I don't want to deal with you. I told you. I said what I said, and that's what I meant. And she's really trying to get them back together. I wrote down, she might be a little volatile, but he's a little stubborn. And somebody said that they made a good couple because they were both very strong-willed. Somebody has to bow down occasionally. And I don't want to say bow down. Somebody has to back off occasionally. Somebody has to be the person to say, what are you trying to say? What is it that you're feeling? How do we move forward? We both can't be like, ah, 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 ah. somebody has to say it. And the person that says it, the other person really needs to acknowledge what the person is saying and not just keep going in a circle. Circle around me, circle. The brain is a really, really wonderful engine. <laughs> Y'all, that covers this entire episode. I will be back, because I'm on my lunch break right now. I'll be back for uh, uh, episode seven. I'm about to watch it. I'll be back, you know, at least before the evening's over, whatever. Anyway, let me know down below uh, what you thought about this episode. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review. If it's your first time visiting my channel, absolutely click the subscribe button and stay. Okay, become a ray of sunshine, click the notification bell, share this all with your friends. You know the deal, okay? Know that I love you in real life and I want every good thing that God has in store for you, even if you don't know what that is for yourself. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I will see you on the next review.